What is going on, YouTube? It is your boy, Low Daddy, Low Rider, Low Stradamus, the Dollar Store TC, whichever way you want to chop it up. I am the first there ever has been and the last there ever will be, so I guess that makes me the one and only. So whether you like me or you don't like me, somehow you can't get rid of me because Open Door just had their earnings and the price has been slipping over the last two days now. So in this video, we're going to go over one, why the price is slipping why the price should not be slipping, and why you have no reason to be alarmed moving forward. So, let's dive into it. Alright, so we're going to start by quickly going over all the information filed in their uh, Q1 2021 uh, financial reports, um, which of course can always be found on my website, growthsaloon.com backslash growth hyphen resources. I'll put a link up here somewhere um, to the video I made just showing you how to get there. It takes like five minutes, but bas basically you can access all this information at your leisure whenever you want. Um, so yeah, let's, let's dive into that really quick. So looking at their Q1 reports, you know, there are, are a couple good things. Uh, our assets increased by about $1.1 billion uh, this quarter, which is great. We need liquidity in this market uh, if we're going to compete against Zillow. Uh, you know, there's going to be more. We'll talk about Zillow later on. But our assets increased by $1.1 billion. Our total liabilities increased by about $265 billion, which, of course, is going to raise our total stockholder equity by about 830 almost $831 million. So good things going on there but a lot of that came from an additional offering we had in february we have to be fair uh we we do call those out for zillow as well so we did have an offering in february that helped us raise a bunch of money and capital that we need for cash flow um so that's that's still a good thing uh our debt to asset ratio we're looking at 0 0.27 indicating this is typically a safer investment uh, of course we know this is going to be skewed data though because we just took on a billion dollars of funding in february or roughly a billion dollars of funding um our current ratio is slightly under five it's 4.88 which is typically a very healthy level of liquidity i would say that is the case here as well however you know we want to see that number as high as zillow's i think zillow's is almost six so if we can get it up to where zillow's is we want to have that same or higher liquidity than they have but it is worth noting that we have more money uh, uh, liquidity wise than zillow does we've got about 3.1 billion dollars for um, liquid capital for strictly this zillow has to divide their capital amongst multiple segments of their company of course um now let's move on to the income statement uh we did 747 million dollars of revenue in q1 20 uh 2021 which is down 508 million dollars from q1 2020 now the reason for this is q1 2020 they were unloading all their inventory that's right when uh coronavirus started so in march they started unloading all their inventory for whatever they can get for it just in case you know coronavirus were to knock real estate down for five years that would ruin the company if they were holding on real estate and they couldn't sell it so they sold all their inventory they had very high revenue 1.25 billion dollars of revenue i wouldn't expect us to touch that until maybe q2 or q3 of this year but i am confident we will again um same numbers again as the first quarter so we'll see in q2 and q3 these numbers will differ what we're doing year to date versus last year year to date i like looking at q2 and q3 for that reason um but our net income on $747 million of revenue, this is why I told you the price is slipping. It's because we lost $270 million on that revenue. Now, that gives us a profit margin of negative 36%. And I always say, I got to be fair, we want to make sure that our number is increasing quarter after quarter, year over year. If we're in the negative, we want to improve that number each quarter. Um, work towards a positive and then build on our positive numbers uh, for profit margin. So negative 36%, it's actually a decrease of about 31% down from roughly negative 5% Q1 2020. Um, now I'll show you later on why that number is skewed and where this number comes from, because the further you dive into it, and I'll pull up from their report where you can find this, it's not actually a $270 million loss. Our cash flow or our margins are not actually negative 36%. This is largely due to stock-based compensation that was awarded um, because they went public in December of 2020. So these was, this was already written into their executive team's contracts. Um, it's how a lot of startups operate. So because they went public, they you know fulfilled as an incentive. Um, and essentially, that's where a large portion of this is from. So I'll tell you exactly how much of that is 
uh, from that later on. But that's what's causing it to slip. Now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the numbers a little bit further as well. So our revenue, it's worth noting. Uh, you can find this again on the website. All the information is there for you. Uh, they beat their revenue projections again for the second quarter in a row. This time they beat it by $127 million. So they were projecting to do $620 million. They did $747 million. So it was a really good quarter. We've smashed through our projections and our projections next quarter in Q2. Um, I might pull it up later in this video for you all as well, or I'll put a link in here for you uh, to check it out, it is over a billion dollars. It's $1.025 or $1.06. 75 billion is where they're projecting the revenue to reach or be, fall in between. If they continue the trend, it looks like they'll beat that revenue and we'll keep our fingers crossed that they do because if they continue to beat revenue, our earnings should come. So the reason that our earnings, or I'm sorry, that the price is slipping is because a lot of outside investors, myself included, you look to PE ratio. That's how a lot of companies are measured, the price to earnings ratio. So how that's calculated is you take the current stock price and you divide that by the earnings per share. So when you have negative earnings that like we know on, on our report, it's negative 270 million divided by the uh, outstanding shares, it gives us like negative 48%, or I'm sorry, 48 cents um, for our earnings per share. So when you're dividing by a negative, you're always going to have a negative. And if you have a negative PE ratio, that's typically a red flag for outside investors. And to be fair, it'd be a red flag for me as well. Uh, the only reason I investigated this earnings report uh, as thoroughly as I did is because I love Open Door, the company. I wanted to see where this money is going if I should take my money out. I don't typically you know, dive this deep into every company, to be fair. So that's a large reason as to why the price is slipping and the stock market's just been taking a shit for the past month it feels like as crypto booms um shout out crypto uh to anyone who's in there with us as well but that's why open door is taking a bath right now but as i said their projections were smashed this quarter they exceeded them by 20 percent um this seems to be a trend with them and i hope it's a trend continuing forward um let's see what else transactions this quarter are up. Uh, our transactions are, they totaled 6,056 home transactions through their platform. So of that, 3,594 were homes that were purchased um, through Open Door. And then of that, 2,462 are homes that were sold through Open Door. You can find that right here. Uh, that's also on their reports. Then let's see inventory. Uh, how many homes they have in their arsenal this quarter was a, a big initiative for them to revamp their inventory because they stopped buying homes last year and that's why their um, revenue took a took a hit in q3 and q4 of 2020 they didn't have enough inventory to sell so they're spending a lot of money so q1 they we knew going in it was going to be a focus to up our inventory focus on buying a lot of homes and adding to that so they can up their revenue as well um and it looks like they did just that so at the end of q1 2021 so of course we've been a few months since then but uh end of q1 they had an inventory of $841 million worth of homes. So that's up from $824 million in Q1 2020, a year ago. And then that's also up $466 million, um, or up from $466 million at the end of Q4 2020. So they added about $400 million worth of home inventory um, since the end of December, which is a great sign. Uh, we want more inventory. Uh, their book value per share is four dollars and thirteen cents, giving us a PB ratio of four point or three point four two, as of five thirteen twenty twenty one, which is when I'm filming this video. Um, that of course will change depending on the price of the stock at any given day. I believe it was like fourteen dollars when I started filming. So three point four two is typically you know it might indicate that the company has not yet been fully priced. Uh, growth has not been priced into the stock yet, so there is opportunity to get in at a fairly low price if you believe in the company. Um, so that's all I'll talk about for PB ratio there. Let's see. Uh, we talked briefly about their stock-based compensation. That accounted for $239 million of that $270 million loss. So this is not money that's actually going out of the company, right? But it needs to be accounted for on uh, a company's financial statements. Let's see if we can pull it up really quick. Yeah, you can do it right here. Uh, this is their cash flow from operations. It needs to be accounted for, stock-based compensation right there. Um, because a lot of tech companies and startups especially will pay their employees in stock-based compensation. So if they don't account for this on um, the earnings reports and they don't have a, a place for it to, to be counted as an expense, 
companies can make their uh, earnings look a lot better than they actually are by just not paying their employees in actual dollars, your operating expenses go way down, obviously, if it's in comp uh, stock-based compensation. They are not they're not paying all their employees in stock-based compensation, so I don't want to paint that picture for you. Uh, but these were incentives for the executive team, and I'm sure early employees as well, um, that you get from being a part of a startup company like that before it becomes huge, before it ever goes public. And when they do go public in Q4 2020, the incentives get paid out. It dilutes the share pool. These have already started to be accounted for, but that accounts for $239 million of our $270 million loss this quarter. So really... We didn't lose 270 million on uh, 747 million in revenue. Really, we lost about 31 million on 747 million in revenue. So rather than having a um, profit margin of negative 36 percent, our profit margin really comes out to negative 4.23 percent, which is up from the same time last year. We're heading in the right direction, but. Outside investors aren't going to dive this deep. They're not going to know that. That's why I'm saying you don't need to worry about it. We're heading in the right direction. Our revenue is going back up. Our inventory is going back up. Our transactions are going back up. All of that's beating what Zillow Offers is doing. I'll try to get to that a little bit later and not make too long of a video here. But there's no need to fear here. We're having an opportunity to buy this on a discount. I don't know how long it'll continue to fall for. The lower it falls, I'm just going to continue adding more and more and more. Um, I've really got no problem chasing this thing to $1 or $0 on that bullish on the company. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to worry, and they have a, a large enough uh, pool of assets, and specifically liquid, as uh, liquid assets, sorry, uh, that we don't need to worry. They're not going to deplete their balance there, especially if they're only losing. Even if they were to lose $200 million a quarter from now until 2025, they're not going to run out of money. Um, they're not going to lose that. We, we know what their stock-based um, compensation schedule looks like based on what they told us. Let's see if we can scroll that really quick. Otherwise, I have a picture, of course, I can pull up. I believe it's right up here. 2021 guidance. That's where you can see the projections uh, right here. This is for Q2 2021. Um, and then right here is where you're going to find everything we just went over. So uh, net income this quarter was impacted by a stock-based compensation expense of $239 million. This expense is primarily related to historical equity awards to employees that were realized in Q1 as a result of going public in December 2020. We expect approximately $175 million in, of stock-based compensation expense in Q2, and then approximately $70 million of stock-based compensation expense in each of Q3 and Q4. So we know what the rest of their schedule looks like. We know that we're going to be taking in larger losses on paper um, than we really are when it comes to cash flow, which is the important thing, especially in the iBuying market. We need liquidity. Um, so yeah, we know what to expect moving forward. Um, and then moving past this year or moving into 2022, I believe that stock-based compensation uh, expense is going to go away. So our earnings are going to start to turn around and the public is going to take note of that. I believe that's when you might start to see the stock really run if it doesn't run before then. Um, so yeah, just something to keep in mind there. Let's see, what else should we go over? Stock-based compensation, yada, 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 yada. This is their whole schedule I wrote out for you all, so you don't have to go dive through the document if you don't want to. Um, and then this is ex exactly what we went over as well. Uh, when it comes to Zillow, like I said, we are you know thoroughly beating the shit out of Zillow offers right now, um, which is great to know. Um... Let's see, Zillow day, Zillow offers in Q1 2021. You can pull this up. I've got Zillow's um, earnings right down here as well. I've got everything summarized in there if you want. Uh, this is their earnings report. And then you can see uh, actually what I'm about to go over here. You can see in Q1 2021, homes is their Zillow offers segment. Don't account for other. It's just this. We did $701 million of revenue through Zillow offers in Q1 2021. Zillow offers, that is. Um, and so that is up by about, I'm sorry, that's down. That is decreased by $58.5 million. Uh, our profit margin on that revenue as well is negative 8.35%. So if you just see open door for their numbers, um, you know, I guess their surface level numbers, you're going to think that Zillow offers is suddenly beating us because we got a negative 36% profit margin. Not the case. Now, to be fair, you can see down here, Zillow offers had about $15.9 million in stock-based compensation. So I went ahead and crunched the numbers one step further for us, um, right before I filmed this actually. And it looks like this, you know, revenue-wise, we're beating them. 
We did $747 million in revenue this past quarter. Zillow offers did $701 million. Uh, Transaction-wise, I wrote that down somewhere, I believe. Well, let's just go back over here. Sorry, I know I'm scatterbrained right now. It is the middle of the day. I'm doing a million things. Um, let's see. Zillow offers, we know that Open Door did... 6,054 transactions on their platform last year, or uh, last quarter. And then in Q1 2021, Zillow offers sold 1,965 homes on their platform, uh, which was a decrease uh, from Q1 2020. Uh, they bought uh, 1,856 homes, which was an increase from Q1 2020. And then that gives us a transaction total that was down. Um, but a transaction total of 3,821. So 3,821 certainly is less than 6,000, and I believe 54 was the total for Open Door, if I am not mistaken, um, which I don't believe I am. So, you know, we're beating on that department. When you look at the numbers, we we're beating on the revenue. When you look at the net loss, it lost less money than us. So that's just, we need to know that for um, profit margin. When you subtract their stock-based compensation from their net loss, that gives us the uh, Zillow offers a real profit margin of cash flow, or for cash flow's sake, of negative 6.08%. Uh, when you subtract the stock-based compensation, like we said earlier, from Open Door, that gives us a actual cash flow profit margin or adjusted profit margin i should say of negative 4.23 percent so we have a better profit margin than zillow offers does now um, we're doing more revenue than, than they are we have a higher inventory total as well i couldn't find their exact inventory number on there but i know it's below 841 million dollars uh, we have better liquidity in terms of um, uh, cash for buying homes and zillow is going all in on this and the reason zillow is going all in on their zillow offer segment um is because they they one know is a very lucrative market it's a 1.6 trillion dollar annual market in the united states alone if they can win that that's a lot of fucking money whoever wins that mar market is going to be swimming in dough um and also number two if they don't win the market and open door were to win out you know this is this is pretty extreme but i believe zillow in their business becomes obsolete the large uh, portion of zillow's money that comes in revenue wise every quarter and every year is from ad revenue of homes on their platform of people wanting their homes to be at the top of the list you know so that they're seen first and they're toured and they're sold quicker now i know as an online marketer ad revenue is going to follow wherever one the eyeballs are and two the transactions are taking place so if we know that open door is having more transactions take place on their platform than zillow offers eventually the advertisers are going to figure this out as well and they're going to start to allocate maybe a small portion of their zillow budget to open door spread it out uh, spread it out diversify uh, and eventually if they're getting better results on open door advertising they're going to take more and more and more eventually all of their ad revenue over to open door and zillow realizes this i believe and if that happens not only did they not win the i buying market which is super lucrative but now they don't have their other revenue coming in anymore either making their entire business obsolete um, now, I know it's an extreme, but that's where I can see it leading to, and that's why I think Zillow's going all in on trying to raise money, not being afraid to lose as much money possible as it would take to, you know, really make an impact in this market. The last thing I wanted to cover as well with um, uh, this competitive landscape is at the end of 2020, Zillow was in 25 markets and Open Door was in 21. For scale, growth, and expansion reasons, it's good to know this, at the end of Q1, Zillow was still in 25 markets and Open Door was in 27 markets. Now, as of today, May 13th, 2021, Zillow is still in 25 markets and Open Door is now in 33 markets, projected to grow to 42 by the end of 2021. So they're doing better already. They're kind of brought, expanding their lead on Zillow offers already. Uh, they're bringing in more money, they have a better profit margin, so they're losing less money now. Um, I think they have a stronger team, you know, altogether, they've been doing it for longer, so they have a competitive advantage there. Um, Open Door is really checking a lot of boxes and they're expanding quicker, we know that now, than Zillow offers is. So if they can, you know, conquer the markets before uh, Zillow offers does, you know, Open Door is gonna win out and our money that we invested at low prices, like today, uh, is going to be worth a fuck ton more 
within the next five years, certainly the next 10 years, and certainly the next 20 years, as long as Open Door continues to be the leader in this industry. So that's why I say not to worry. That's why I say not to fret. And, you know, I know why the price is slipping. I expected this. I said it on my stream the other day. But don't be afraid. So in the comments, go ahead let me know if you thought this was useful, if you have any questions, if this helped you at all, or maybe calmed you down. Um, if I'm being a big fucking idiot, you know, I always love to hear that. Just tell me why. Um, I love hearing what y'all have to say. Uh, I can't stand sitting in an echo chamber because I don't get any better that way. Uh, when I hear opposing viewpoints, it allows me to, you know, consider questions or uh, concerns that I might have not already addressed otherwise. So I can either become more confident in an investment I'm making, or I can get out of an investment because I think it's a bad investment now because I never considered something. So please let me know if I'm missing something in there or if I missed anything in this video that you want me to cover in the future. Uh, also, feel free to leave a comment letting me know you want me to review the earnings of one of the companies you're invested in. I can't promise I'll go as far in depth as I did with uh, Open Door, um, I will go, you know, a, a decent amount though, like I do for all the other companies. Uh, but this literally took me two days to uh, really dive into and understand. But I do that because I'm an investor, and when I'm an invested in any company, uh, I consider myself a co-owner of the company. So I need to know everything going on and know it well. So that's why I went this far into it, and I wanted to help y'all understand too. If you're invested in Open Door, so let me know. If, are you invested in Open Door? Are you not? Leave a comment about that below if you want as well. And then, as always, please, 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 smash that like button, smash, smash, uh, smash that subscribe button, and ring the little bell next to it so you get notified every single time we drop a new video, every time we go live, and we're making money up in here, which is every single day the stock market is open, folks, except for some days. And then, as always, have a good day. Have a good night, or whatever time it is, whatever time you're watching there, uh, this video. Just have a good time in general and spread some love. And until next time, y'all take care. Peace out.